Hello and welcome to the chapter 11 workout problem video. In this workout problem video, we are going to do the problem sets for chapter 11 in the OpenStax macroeconomic textbook. The, chapter 11 is about the aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Problem 1. Review the problem shown in, in the workout work it out titled interpreting the aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Like the information provided in that feature, Table 11.2 shows information on aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and the price level for the imaginary country of Serbia. So here's the table below, right? So we have all the aggregate demand and aggregate supply data and the price level data. So now the first thing we need to do is we need to plot the aggregate demand and aggregate supply diagram from the data shown. And then we're going to identify the equilibrium. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and map the data. First, out on the graph, I need to get my uh, bearings, right, on where things begin. So the origin right here is zero for both, right? And so I can make little squiggly marks here, right, which shows that there's some data missing in between those squiggly marks, right? So really, I'm just going to take my range from 110 to 170. And so that's about, uh, let's say, 30, 60, I guess, right? 60. Uh, price levels in between there and so I'm going to hit right in the middle here the middle one is going to be uh, 140 okay so that's where I'm going to be at in the middle and then in between there I'm going to hit all my price level now I'm going to lay out the aggregate demand aggregate supply so really my low point here is going to be looks like 640 so I can kind of do the same thing here I can do my little squiggly lines right which say I'm missing out on the data. So I'm going to go from actually 600 right here, right? 600 my, is my low. And my high is going to be uh, 770. Okay, so let's go ahead and map out. Let's use uh, green as our aggregate uh, demand. Okay, so aggregate demand is going to be green. It's going to be sloping downward from left to right. Okay, and so the first one is at 700 it's going to be at 110 so right about let's say about right about here okay so there's there's our first dot and then at 690 it's going to be about 120 we're going to go up to about right here so there's our aggregate demand okay so if we connect all the dots here that is our aggregate demand 80 okay now we're going to map out aggregate supply in red okay so there we go there's our aggregate supply we can connect the dots here and it's right up here is the last one okay so there's aggregate supply identify the equilibrium so we're going to identify the equilibrium and let's pick blue here here's the equilibrium okay so now i've got it all mapped out so my green is aggregate demand i mapped out each point and then connected the points okay that gives me my aggregate demand uh curve then I mapped out the red, which is aggregate supply. So aggregate supply is starting low here at the left and going upwards to the right. And I mapped that out. Each I plotted each point, and then I connected the, the points uh, where the price level and the uh, real GDP right meet. And I was able to then determine what the equilibrium point was, which is right where the blue arrow is pointing, right? So that's the first point. That's the first thing we're supposed to show. The next thing we need to do is we need to imagine that as a result of a government tax cut, aggregate demand becomes higher by 50 at every price level. Identify the new equilibrium. So we're looking at, we're looking over here at aggregate demand. So let me go ahead and change colors. So okay, so let's do purple. Okay, so here's aggregate demand right here, right? I'm going to circle it in purple. This is the column that we're looking at. And what we're really going to do with the tax cut is we're going to add 50 to each, right? So we're going to add 50 to each one. And what that's going to do is it's going to take our green graph right here, right? So see the green? It's going to shift. So let's, let's start, for example, at price level. Uh, let's start here at the top, right? So at price level 110, aggregate demand instead of being 700 will be 750 okay so so here's about the 700 right here so it's shifting over and i'm going to be at 750 
Okay, so we're, we're going all the way over this direction. Here's my, let's say it's about right here. Here's my 750, right? So that's the shift that I'm looking at. And that's going to be for each dot. Okay, so we can go ahead and we can actually calculate it and get the data and then plot the, the, the each data point on the graph or we can just kind of eyeball it right so I'm going to take each one each of these dots over about 50 right it's going to go like this somewhere like that right somewhere like something like this right each one's going to go over then I'm going to go ahead and connect the dots here okay and that's going to be my aggregate demand uh, we'll call this uh, one right we can call this original green one aggregate demand O which means original, right? Our original or our zero, our beginning point. And so that's what the new aggregate demand is going to look like. So now we need to act, now we need to look at it and we need to say, okay, what is our new equilibrium point? So I'm I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere right around the price level of uh, 140. At that price level, that's where the equilibrium point is going to be. That's going to be pretty close, right? And we can actually do the math to work it out, right? So if we ha start at 670 and add 50, we are going to end up at 720, right? So it's 720, which means that, sure enough, at this point, uh, that's where our aggregate demand and aggregate, uh, aggregate supply are going to be equal. So sure enough, that is going to be our equilibrium point. And we can go ahead and map that in right here right here as being let's say e1 right let's say this original one down here was e0 or eo right we can do that right there and so that's really what the shift is going to look like okay now see it says how will the new equilibrium alter output how and then how will it alter the price level what do you think will happen to employment so what what we're looking at here is we're looking at really we're go we got to look back at our axes ac back at our data points and see what this shift in equilibrium from EO to E1 does to both real GDP and to the price level. So we see that as we shift, right, we're going to be shifting from our price level of 130 up to a price level of 140, right? So price level is going to increase. And then we also see that we're shifting from or a real GDP of about 680 right here, right? to a real GDP for both aggregate demand and aggregate supply of about 720, right? So that means that our uh, real GDP is increasing also, which is output, right? So in this case, that's output. So our output is also going to increase. So we're going to have some pressure maybe price level wise, right, on inflation, right? That's kind of an, the inflationary side of things. Uh, our output also is going to increase. Uh, which means that uh, as we get higher prices, we're also going to get more goods in the market as well. So it really is just showing us kind of economic growth for the most part. And so uh, the, the, for the third one, right, so this is the answer to the first, right, is output. Output is going to increase. Uh, for the second, how, what, how will it alter price level? Price level is going to be increasing. And then uh, the very last part of C is what do you think will happen to employment? This aggregate supply right here is our short run. So it's SR aggregate supply, short run. Our long run aggregate supply is going to be maybe somewhere right here, right here, where the aggregate supply kind of gets really steep and gets to full unemployment. So this is our long run aggregate supply, which is, which is our potential GDP. As it approaches potential GDP, then our unemployment uh, may decline, right? So because we're going to be employing more of our resources to hit that new uh, output level. So unemployment is going to most likely decrease. Now we're at problem two. It's going to be pretty similar to the first one. And that is we are, we are going to need to plot our aggregate demand and aggregate supply for this island harris island okay so we got our aggregate supply and our aggregate demand mapped out so and we're supposed to identify equilibrium so we're going to go ahead and do that right here in blue so here is our we'll call this eo right so that is equilibrium right there 
And we can see it on our data, right? The original data, we can see where we're matched up, right? So that right there is E, E, O at that point. So now we're going to go ahead and go forward. It says, what uh, would you expect unemployment in this economy to be relatively high or relatively low? So at this point, we need to look at, we need to say, okay, what, where is potential GDP? Where is the uh, full employment mark? So in this one, I w we would expect that unemployment would be would be high because the economy is producing uh, at well below potential GDP. So so we're kind of at the flat shape right here, right? So this is this point right here. EO is still kind of at the at the flat side of uh, aggregate supply. So really, we're going to expect it to be low. Okay, so we'll go ahead and. Go ahead and say it's still going to be low. Um, it's going to be relatively low. And then C, it says, would you expect concern about inflation in this economy to be relatively high or relatively low? Um, and with this one, we're, we're going to say that inflation should be relatively, or concern about it should be relatively low because small increases in price lead to high increases in output and thus and thus employment so it's going to be for this one inflation is going to be relatively low as well since we're kind of just barely right right up here we'll say right up at this point right is is where we have this right here is still let's say that is where our uh, potential GDP is going to be so we're still kind of in the safe area right we're in the area where we still have relatively uh, low unemployment and relatively low inflation at this point. But uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to say in D here, it says, imagine that consumers begin to lose confidence about the state of the economy. And so aggregate demand becomes lower by 275 at every price level. Identify the new aggregate equilibrium. Okay, so now we're going the other direction, right? Our first problem, we were we were adding to aggregate demand. This one, we are going to subtract from aggregate uh, demand. This is going to be our aggregate demand uh, one. This this original green one was our original, right? Our our zero, our starting aggregate demand, and then we're actually shifting this direction, which is a decrease in output. So really, our new equilibrium is going to be right here. So this is going to be equilibrium 1. And we can actually map that out on the graph as well, right here. right? So this is E1 right there. So really, our here's our shift, right? So happening in the relatively flat part of the aggregate, uh, aggregate supply curve. So what we're going to see is, is our price level okay and this goes on to e on this one number two is how will the shift in aggregate demand affect the original output price level and employment okay so so we're going to look at let's look look at the output first right so we're going to have a rather large so we started out at 500 right as our original output level down here and then we're shifting all the way to 325 so right all the way over here so we're definitely going to have our output is going to decrease right by quite a bit and then our price level is we're starting at 140 right and we're shifting down to 120 so we're going to have a price level decrease of 20 Okay, so what does what does that look like for unemployment? The the employment's going to decline, which means unemployment will in, increase, right? So now we're moving on to number three. So our final one, and so we have one more to map here, and this is, is Santer is an economy, and the, here is the data for us: the aggregate demand, aggregate supply data with the price levels. So what we need to do first is we need to map this one out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and map this one out, connect the dots, and here is aggregate supply. Oh, that's our original aggregate supply. 
Okay, so we've got this mapped out, and really the first thing we need to do is we need to identify the equilibrium, so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick. We'll do that in blue, our equilibrium point, as we see on the data as well, right? So we see it here on the data. We see this is equilibrium. This is our original equilibrium, and we see it here on our graph that this here is uh, the uh, equilibrium, right? The original one. And what we're gonna do is we're going to first look at our Look at our graph here. So B, we're going to say, uh, would we expect unemployment, uh, unemployment, right, people not working that want to work in this economy to be relatively high or low? And in this case, we're, we would uh, expect kind of unemployment should be high due to the flat shape of the AS curve at equilibrium. That's for the last one. And then, so relatively high because of the flat curve. As we get closer to the, as it steepens, which actually that's kind of, we're getting close to that really, right? So our unemployment's gonna be high at this case because we're still not quite up there yet. We're still not quite up there. But as we get cl uh, up more up the curve, as aggregate supply gets steeper, we're gonna have uh, lower unemployment. Um, so it's, it's relatively, low compared to maybe some of these points down here down the down the curve to the left but anyway so c here is you expect prices to be relatively large or small concerning a uh, concern so our, what people are worried about right or what the economists anyways are worried about so would you expect prices to be a relatively large or small concern for this economy so the prices in this case is prices of outputs are much too low and should be a major concern so so um so anyways so that's that's kind of where we're at there with that so it should be a large concern i guess is is what what the answer is for that one large concern and high is the way it works and then let's go ahead and read on so as you get on to and and pull up so you can actually pull up these uh the problem set in the uh, as where you go to submit the problem right in the submission links you can actually pull up the sheet that has the uh, problem set on it so you can kind of read through here so let's go but let's go ahead and go forward i'm not going to remap this but uh, we can kind of go back and forward i should have put all this on one slide so it says imagine that input prices fall so that aggregate supply shifts to the right by 150 units. Identify the new equilibrium. Okay, so we're going back here. We're gonna go, you can actually calculate them out or you can just kind of eyeball it. If you calculate them, you'll actually see that sure enough, right here, right, this shift over 150 is gonna land us at 900, which will make this, this price level at 70, be uh, the new equilibrium, okay? So the question then is, okay, so we're gonna identify the new equilibrium in, in our graph. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that in blue. The old one was right here, right? We kind of covered it up with our graph. So this was EO, right? That's the original. And so really this is the shift that we're looking at is gonna be from EO down to the right to E1, okay? And so, Part of our question then is, here at the end, E, part, e, part E of the question is, how will the shift in aggregate supply affect the or original output, price level, and employment? So let's talk about this. So here we are, our original output. Let's talk about that first. So our original output was here at 850. The new output is 900. So that is going to move this direction or we're gonna have an, an increase in output, right? That's what's gonna happen since we're moving to the right. Our equilibrium is moving to the right, so we're gonna have an increase in output. So let's look at our price level here. So our price level begins at 80, right here at 80, right? And it drops down to a price level of 70. That's our new price level with equilibrium, right? here this was our old price level was right here so as we drop down okay so our price level is going to decrease 
What about employment? Well, employment really is going to follow our output. So as output increases, our employment is going to increase as well. Okay, so so that's going to be the the final one here, right? So as output increases, our employment is going to follow that. Our employment is going to follow that increase. So our employment is going to increase as well. So that's the end of chapter three.